A few months ago, we lived a phenomenon in the streets near the movie theaters. ¿Tú crees que una pelea de perros sea lugar para un niño? Ahora es una vida de perro, Camela. Endless lines, hundreds and hundreds of people waiting to watch Conducta. A film that filled every movie theater of the country. People laughed and cried watching a movie in which they felt mirrored. Today, we will meet its director, Thank Ernesto you. Daranas. Daranas, did you imagine when you think about your movie, Conducta, that you were going to have that such, such a big welcoming like you had in the movie theaters, all that people, endless lines, waiting to see the movie. Did you imagine that? The truth is, and I always say it, that we were really scared about the film's theme. It's a film about values in a moment that, uh, paradoxically, it is claimed that there is a crisis in values. I was uh, comforted by the film students who worked with me in the film. They thought that the premise was very important in this moment. But we came to the premiere with a big scare. So, uh, Daranas, even though you were scared in the first place, it was a success. And I think probably that has to do with the young people, the students, from the University of Arts of Cuba that you work with, that kind of workshop in which you had these young people to work with you. How did that uh, function? How did you manage to work with these young people? From its very beginning, we thought of the film as a workshop movie. Uh, the teaching exercise consisted in approaching reality from the critical view of these uh, young people a view which I also completely share. How to transcend those barriers and make it in such a critical moment with such hot issues a proposal somehow constructive. I believe that the workshop, uh, I mean, their contribution uh, was really uh, significant. I would have done a completely different film if I had done it alone. Yes, uh, Daranas, and it's a movie that a lot of people went to the, to the movie theater because they felt like mirrored in, in, in your movie. And I've seen, I've read about, uh, about you, and there are a lot of streets and roofs and places that has to do with your childhood. How, how did that help to the final uh, filming that you did? The plot uh, develops in the neighborhood I grew up. The cast and crew always joke about that because they say that my prior film was shot uh, 100 meters from my house and this one was shot uh, 50 meters, a bit closer. So it was a neighborhood, but I did not limit myself to what I would see around me. As I was saying, the perspective of these students was really revealing to me. Even those places that one knows very well after so many years, these students have a different way of looking at them. I had photography students, script students, direction students, and they brought their own proposals. That is how they saw those spaces and that reality which I believe I knew very well. It's interesting because their viewpoint can radically change from the perspective of those students. I always insist it was an element that enriched me very much. There is a debate now in Cuba about the values and about its crisis. It's been said that there's a, uh, a crisis of the values and the principles in the new generations, which I don't think is uh, only a matter that has to do with Cuba, but it's an international thing. And now it is very debated here, and we have a lot of uh, television programs that have been dealing about this. How do you think Conducta help uh, to, in a way, clear this debate or 
or to make it worse or make it better? How do you think it helped or not to the debate about the crisis of values in our society? Self-esteem is one of the first things that are lost in poverty or misery. Both people and societies lose their self-esteem. Entire peoples can lose their self-esteem in situations which are difficult or complex. We've lived very difficult and complex years, and sometimes we lose uh, sight of how much it is worth what we really are. There are lots of values in our roots and in our essence, and uh, to me it was important to, to talk about that. So, for a long time we have talked about the crisis and about the things we lack, which in a way determine all the conflicts present in the film. And to me that was the key. I believe that talking about values, about our feelings, about roots, was something that would go through a character like Armelas, a character that brings history. The teacher in the film. Uh, the teacher, she incarnates th those deeply rooted values of our idiosyncrasy and our nationality. And a character like that of Chala, the kid, talks about those things that concern us that make us restless. And in that contraposition and harmony of those uh, forces is where the center of the story should be. It is not uh, the pretension of putting values ahead because one cannot completely talk about this complexity in these matters. So we thought that in the human stories and in the characters, the film had the capacity to express from the simplicity of the life of a child and the simplicity of the life of a teacher, the complexities of a society or at least of a part of this society. And uh, you, I can see that, Anas, that you were very involved in all this process of finding the kids for the movie, which was a very um, long casting process. And I know that Carmela, the teacher, has to do with your own childhood and all that. How important is for for a movie director or even for an artist in general to be so linked to its origins, uh, to, to the way in which they were formed as the professionals and the people that they are today. Art embraces an infinite number of facets. You can recreate a new world from complete alienation, art in full of that, and uh, there is a social commitment in art. Sometimes works of art that seem far away from reality are those which are the closest ones to that reality. For example, Tolkien's words are a referent and a parallel with our current world and with great conflicts we are witnessing. In my case, the roots uh, have been the, ex the essence of most of what I have done. All those stories which uh, surround us express the complexity of the human condition. In that daily life and in those little details, one can find all the complexity that an artist intends to uh, approach. In this case, uh, the, the films that I have made from the aesthetic and formal point of view is the line that I have uh, had more affinity with. There are many ways and options to approach reality. Whichever the case, what always matters is having creative, creative honesty, and in the end, the capacity that one has to make it real and express oneself authentically. Daranas, is, there's an expectation now because Conducta, uh, which is not only a very popular movie, movie here in Cuba, but you've done a very important job all around the world to show the movie. Uh, Probably, I mean, it's the option of Cuba to the Oscars award. How important would it be if it gets nominated? Would you, would you want that? Would you, how do you feel about it? Nobody can honestly say that he wouldn't mind being nominated for an Oscar. But it is also a reality that we overvalue uh, certain things. I don't think that for a film like ours, the Oscars would be a realistic option. It's a kind of filmmaking, distribution, and visibility 
And one has to acknowledge that in an event like that, one is surrounded by excellent movies. And it's a highly competitive event that has its own priorities. And what one should pay attention to is the fact that you have made the film you believed in and the one you wanted to do. And that has consequently expressed a, a time frame. Of course, any filmmaker is, uh, to any filmmaker is great to hear the news that he has been nominated. For now, I'm very happy that my film has been Cuba's bid to the Oscars. But let's talk a little bit about um, your first movie, Dioses Rotos, or Broken Guts in English. Uh, another movie which is about a dark side of the Cuban society, about prostitution and its roots, historical roots. It received a very good critic too. It was very popular in its days. Uh, and I wonder, it was your first movie, a, a very complex production. How come you you involved in this kind of big productions and you success? Because uh, to, 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 get the, to get success is not that easy in this field. I believe that there is always a bit of luck in everything. Often one works with a lot of insecurity and doubts in the creative process of making a movie, there are many moments and possibilities for being wrong. It's really difficult and complex. In any case, I believe that I, what I have done is uh, to keep the track of the things that I know of, things that I understand and that I can relate to well. I've tried to express myself about the things in the way I believe that I should do and to have a critical but fair and gentle look at my reality, especially with the people who surround me. Respect to people is conducive to respect to the characters. Respecting a character is not forgiving them or being condescending, but just understand their, their complexities and contradictions everything good and bad that exists in ourselves. In that complexity lies the constructions of cinematographic drama, and those are the tracks that I have followed, being consequent to the things I know of and I understand. Eluding the things I believe uh, I cannot talk about uh, with some certainty or depth, and understanding that in a simple story, uh, one can find the expression of that complexity of life that I have mentioned already, the complexity of the society, of our times, and of our reality. Those are the things that basically I have looked at, and I believe that people have understood them. It has been often said that people don't want us to talk about our problems. I don't agree with that. They say people do not want us to talk seriously about our problems. But I believe that when we do it seriously and honestly, the mistakes that we can make are accepted. You can feel that. And in my case, I believe uh, it's why both films have been both uh, successful. People don't want uh, to know about their problems. That's an idea. Why do you think Conducta was such a success? I think it because it actually expressed our concerns, our fears, our insecurity about the uh, future and about the present. Because the film acknowledged things we feel and that, uh, I believe, uh, is due to a great extent to the children in the film. We worked with children from the same backgrounds of those that the children in the movie come from. Their perspective harmonized a great deal with that of the film students. So there were two fresh looks that added to whatever I could be bringing to the film. But in fact, they changed my view radically. I insist that these were decisive matters which I believe are felt in the story. I practically did not rehearse with the children. We worked a lot on their character building, but based on improvising, especially with our casting director. 
I didn't want them to get to the shooting with a learned script or with memorized lines. I wanted them to get to the shooting with their own lives ready to be expressed. Improvising is an important element. It meant a challenge for the professional talent and for the crew because uh, anything could happen in the set. I believe that sense of truth is uh, conveyed by the film and it is a truth brought by the children. So having preserved part of their own lives is felt somehow in the film that is constructed a reality as felt as a reflection of our own. Most of the lines of dialogue that made us laugh or cry uh, emerge during the shooting. Of course, there were situations somehow previously constructed and we knew the point we wanted to reach, but that enriched the film and it was grounded on the preparation that casting director Maria Lopez did with these kids. Without that, we couldn't have achieved what we did in the shooting. I believe that in that truth and in that uh, gush of fresh air brought by the children and by the young people, there is an important part of what you are referring to. Obviously, you believe in the teamwork. Absolutely. Filmmaking is, in fact, collective work because every department involved has a creative uh, weight that will be decisive at some point. There are moments at which photography is the center of expression of the plot, at others it is the music, the soundtrack, at others it is the cast, so there are moments for each thing. And it's the sum total of these elements, the one that conforms cinematographic language. You cannot underestimate anything. Each specialty really has a creative look, and what needs to be clear is the course of the work, where we want to go with the story we're telling. So when you involve the whole team, you can work in a different way. You feel a great sense of responsibility, and also fear is shared by everyone because, as I said before, there is always a bit of fear and insecurity while at work. I want to um, ask you a question that has not to do with your films directly, but uh, it's something that is being very discussed nowadays here in Cuba in the, in, in the movie world, in the movies world. That has to do with the funding for the movies. You made Conducta with uh, only uh, Cuban money uh, from the state, if with different uh, sources. Uh, but there is some problem, as you've said it in previous interviews, that uh, the lack of money, the lack of financing is making this industry very complex. Do you see any solution to this? In reality, the lack of funding for Cuban cinema is a fact of a larger picture. The essential problem is that our cinema has uh, lost its structure. Our cinema has lost its organization and somehow it has lost its purpose. When uh, filmmakers move a law for cinema, it's not based on a whim. We're suggesting an alternative, an option, so that an industry is structured in a way that funding sources can be many. Some funds can come from the states, other from the Ministry of Culture, and there are funding ways that exist everywhere, but that are impossible for us. It's an important paradox that most of our cinema is independent cinema, which still doesn't have a legal support. Why? Uh, how this, does this work? If you make an independent movie, it's not legal? It is not exactly that the film is not legal. What is not legal is everything you do to make the movie. And that's complicated because you have to pull a significant amount of resources. 
It doesn't mean that the movies that are made outside the industry are persecuted. That would be putting things to extremes that are not real. But it's a contradiction that those movies had to be made that way. That young filmmakers who have graduated from our schools in our country cannot freely, openly, and clearly relate to the institutions, to the state, to all the funding sources. They cannot get shooting permits or cannot relate to distribution chains. Since there isn't a law for cinema, there isn't a system for cinema. And we're lagging behind in some aspect in which we used to be front runners at some point in the revolution. A feature that distinguishes the policies that in different countries of Latin America characterize the social processes taking place, like in Ecuador, the Dominican Republic, Colombia, Costa Rica, Argentina. Practically all nations in the area, and many of them, were inspired by the first law of cinema of 1959 in our country, and they have generated their own systems to make their cinema grow from having a law of cinema. What is the role of the Cuban Film Institute in this uh, new scenario? Well, it has a role of coordinating and preserving the filmic heritage of our country. It's the place where cultural strategies are outlined regarding film promotion, things that we have lost and that used to be of great value. Distribution is another aspect. This is an exception in the current picture of the cinema in our country. Also, the conditions of our movie theaters, practically there isn't a theater where you can properly listen to or watch the film. The enjoyment of going to the movies has been lost and we are paying a very high price. Only restructuring the system for the Cuban cinema would be able to draw a plan in which funding is just an element. It's an element which can multiply itself and which has to have repercussions in distribution, exhibition, and in the way that our cinema is consumed and in the way it is known worldwide. A lot of people don't know that here in Cuba, you can watch the best movies of the world paying only 10 cents of dollars. That's what we pay for going into a movie theater, whatever, whatever it, uh, it's been shown. Uh, how important do you think is to keep alive the tradition of the creation of movies like we had in the 60s, in the 70s? How important do you think this is, at least to to make it to, to make to make it more strong, which is not right now. We have like two or three movies a year. Probably this year will be special because we have more. How important do you think this is? Uh, I can tend that we have to understand that we are at a new moment and uh, we have to achieve uh, things, a scenario where actors have changed and circumstances have changed. Cinema is consumed, watched, and lived in a different way. And that has to do with the technological aspect, an aspect which is universal. Therefore, updating is an essential element. One important thing are movie theaters, home consumption, internet consumption, uh, which is another element for us. At the same time, uh, we have to understand that the uh, actors that produce this cinema are now more diverse. All these new uh, generations of filmmakers have a great affinity with uh, new technologies and they know how to work with them. And there is uh, a tradition of what cinema has always been. Uh, in that case, the recovery of that production and of that cinema uh, would need to be updated. And it would need uh, the capacity to empower its distribution. And at the same time, to restore a dialogue with its audience that will essentially depend on what you were saying that there will be more productions. We make very few films a year. Producing more is a key, a key element in that scenario. One learns by trial and error, and filming, one grows as a filmmaker. And that's another element that is stopping the development of our cinema. Producing more has to do with also uh, with the quality of films we're making. 
and we need to produce keeping in mind all tendency, all tastes and all perspectives. In general, it's a complex moment. It's a moment that does not appear to us as very promising, but it's a moment for which we have to work, and it's a moment for which we all have to express what we feel and think about. So I believe that an initiative from a group of filmmakers calling their attention on these aspects is something that should be listened to and to which our society and art should give an answer. Okay, thank you very much. Darana, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you.